Okay, I just put together this deck yesterday. Figured I'd record close game. I had a really, really close game earlier today, but I forgot to record it. Didn't have time, but this one is definitely worthy of recording. I'm playing against Mr. Sparkle, who is, normally plays bad decks. He's played a bunch of bad decks in the past and has wised up and started using Edric after I trashed him with it a bunch of times. Although I don't like his version at all. It's just got a bunch of bad creatures in it. It's Edric, so it can win, especially going first. So here we go. I actually have a pretty decent draw. If he doesn't get a Mana Elf, I've got Martyr of Frost to stop Edric right off the bat. Neither of us mulligans. He gets Sky Shroud Ranger. I guess it's pretty decent. Requires you to uh, play extra lands, but it's pretty decent, actually. I considered running it in my current version. But I don't like the fact that you have to actually draw the lands in order to really abuse it. But of course it enables turn 2 Edric here. And he's got the island to go with it, and Edric around my mana drain. But I top decked Snapcaster Mage. Perfect timing. Sends them both in. And because he doesn't play counters, I'm able to trade. Kill both his guys. I think he makes a bad, bad mistake here. Pumping the uh, Twin Blade Slash, casting this sort of worthless Twin Blade Slasher instead of pumping the Tree Speaker totally changes how much stuff he can do on the next turn. I draw an island with perfect timing, allowing me to get top out. Levels up and runs Edric into Mana Drain. I draw like a lot of clutch spells this game. So I think for a while about he just casting a zombie here. The problem is, is that he can just cast Edric another turn. Um, he can cast Edric right away, and I have no way to stop it. So the play here is just cripple his mana. Since Edric costs 7 now, just steal the Tree Speaker and protect it with uh, negate or muddle in case he's got bounce or something. <laughs> You'll probably be laugh at me. Yeah, the top of my deck kind of sucks right now. It's just all mana artifacts. God, I really, really, you really see how bad like the Cold Steel Heart and uh, the Sky Compass are, Star Compass are. Just comes into play tapped. Mana artifacts are so much worse than the ones that make mana when they come out. Like, you just can't accelerate off of them. You can't cast them and then sit on one island and in a gate. Like, they're just so different in terms of how they work tempo-wise. I haven't decided if I really want to cut them yet, just because they seem necessary. But I'm right on the edge of cutting a bunch of those. Comes into play tapped ones. I draw them all the time, like those three. <laughs> I guess. Berserker and this stupid thing. Ugh. I love how this guy, later on in this match, he accuses me of getting a ridiculous draw. But he's the one who had turn two Edric followed by Skysweeper. Perfect answer to Sower. So I've got to assume he's just going to be killing off Sower of Temptation next turn and play accordingly. Hits me for some meaningless damage. So right here, I have enough mana to cast Coalition Relic. He can't obviously cast his... Uh, he can't cast his... Um, his Edric yet, because I still hold his guy and he's stuck on 5 land, but as soon as he kills the Sower, then he gets 7 mana from the Jora, speak, Jora guy, so at least I have a turn. Advise me a turn. But I decide I'm just going to start drawing cards, because I need to get to some more lands and hopefully some answers here. I'm looking at the Muddle the whole time, thinking about ramping up into, um, into Cyclonic Rift to shut everything down, but I don't really have a lot of time. Oh, my other option also is, I'm at this point I'm actually thinking I need to get Jitte going. Because with enough mana here, I can uh, transmute and cast Jitte. So I'm hoping to just draw some lands through Azami in this thing to do that whole play next turn to maybe kill the Skysweeper if he doesn't, uh, if he doesn't use it. If 
probably wasn't the best play to just tap these guys out, given that uh, it uh, it makes my play the play much more obvious for him. <laughs> he casts coat of arms, which changes the whole Jete math quite a bit. Now I'm on a really fast clock. But look at that Jete right off the top. Who needs to transmute? attack here and I kill his Dryad Arbor right away. So figuring I made a mis pretty bad mistake here actually. I had um I looked at my cards and I, I saw that I had a spell pierce on top at some point. And uh had I remembered that, I could have just drawn a card with the top and spell pierce the stampede, which is going to do an extra 12 damage to me. So he's actually attacking for lethal damage here. I saved myself with a Jite and charge. Ugh, better player would have just drawn that spell pierced and counterspelled the stampede. But I'm still doing okay here. That's right. I had a. I have exactly enough mana to do my little trick here, though, because I did charge the coalition relic, that I can. Um, and I happen to have an island on top as good fortune, so I transmute, and get cyclonic rift, and I have exactly enough. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and he knows that he's screwed now behind an active jitte with two counters on it. And in response to that, he concedes the game. Anyway, pretty short and sweet. Awesome comeback. I'm sure I'll have more games with this Azami deck and right down the road.